So, uh, you know, I was uh, meditating on some things, and uh, uh, I was thinking about it, and I said, well, tonight, you know, when you think about the things going on in the world, um, famines, floods, you know, I was watching the flood, or just looking at it, what's going on in the Carolinas, and just all of the crazy stuff that's going on in the world. Many people, uh, you find, are falling away from the faith. Um, they're losing their hope in the Lord. Um, they find themselves in other things, and uh, they're just totally just giving up. And if, if ever was a time that we needed to hold on even more to the Lord, it is in these times right now, perilous times, where we must hold on to the Lord. We must hold on to whom we have believed in, despite what else is going on around us, just putting our hope and our trust in the Lord, despite what else is happening. Uh, so tonight, um, I was going to have us all, have everybody, I was counting how many people was in here, because I was going to have everybody, because I think this is good from time to time, just to kind of gauge where everybody is reading-wise, because I don't know, you know, you never know people who come into the Bible set, people actually go home and read the Word of God. There's many people who I've seen over the years that come in and out to Bible study, and they look it up on the screen, and they're just reading, and you have one-on-ones with people, yeah, I'll go home and read the Word, I just, this is my... My reading for the, for the whole week, you know what I mean? They don't do not they don't do no other reading, and it's so important, you know, to fight this enemy. You got to know the word yourself too, you know. You get knocked down, you know what I mean? You got to be able to throw the word like, "Devil, I hate you." You know what I mean? That's not going, you know. Of course, everybody hates you. You know what I mean? That's not going to rebuke him. You know, he just laughs at you. You got to be able to know the word of God. You can't be like the sons of Sceva, like I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches. And the demons manifested and said, Jesus we know, and Paul we know, but who are you? And then they, they manifested and beat them, beat them half to death and made them look silly. Because it showed they had no power. They knew they didn't know the Lord. So it's so important for us to know the word and to know the Lord. So tonight I'm going to have us uh, people get into groups. And we're going to be in, in a very important book of the Bible, which is uh, 2 Thessalonians. And the topic tonight, um, which will be a part two, uh, will be entitled, Hold On To Me, Lord. Hold on to me, Lord. You know, no matter what goes on, no matter what I go through, Lord, hold on to me. Hold on to me. Don't let me go, Lord. Don't let me, even when I want to do me, um, Lord, hold on to me. Because, Lord, if you don't hold on to me, I don't know what's going to happen to me. So we'll go ahead and I'll go before the Lord in prayer. And then we'll go ahead and have everyone count off. And we'll go ahead and get into the group. So for everyone, bow the heads. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gathering. God, we thank you for another awesome opportunity that you've given us to be here. This is the day the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad. In. God, we give you thanks and praise for waking us up and clothing our right mind, God. We thank you for setting us on our way, Father God. We thank you for having the activity of our limbs, oh God. You do so many great things that we take for granted, Father God. So many things that people in other countries, God, they don't have access to, God. They would just wish they could have the things that we have. So we just take time to tell you, thank you, oh God, for all the things you have done, Father God. You are awesome, God. You're worthy of praise. If you don't do another thing for us, oh God, you're worthy to be magnified and exalted for all the things that you have done, for bringing us from a mighty long way. Your name is worthy to be magnified and exalted in the midst of your people, God. I just want to tell, take time to tell you, thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done. Now I ask tonight, oh God, in the name of Jesus, God, anoint your word that it may minister to your people where they are, Father God. Encourage them, Father God. Cause them to be stirred up, Father God, to get into their word even more, oh God. Cause them to seek after you like never before, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, cause them to hold on to you, Father God, and your word even more, Father God. In the name of Jesus, bind every distraction of your yoke, every hindrance, Father God, that may come against, Father God, what you want to say tonight, oh God. Move every distraction, oh God. Have your way in the midst of your people, Father God. Cause them to wake up, oh God. Cause them, Father God, to be sober in their minds, Father God, of the signs of the, of the seasons, oh God. In the name of Jesus, God, cause us to draw closer to you, Father God, for our salvation draw nearer than when we first believed, Father God. So we bless you, we thank you in advance for meeting us here, Father God. Have your way tonight. Feel free to say what you want, oh God, and have your way in the midst of your people. I thank you and bless you in advance in Jesus' name. Amen. So it's important that we sometimes we get together and know this word because you never know where life may life may come and find you. You need to have the word. If you ain't got the word, you ain't gonna have nothing. You know, because without the word, the word is life, and without the word, it's just death. So.
So uh, you guys did an awesome job. And just just want to kind of comment on each chapter. Um, this chapter, with all the chapters and all the books in the Bible, Paul and other disciples, apostles, and they, as they write to the churches, there's a lot of persecution going on. As the first we talked about, um, there's a lot of persecution going on. But the fact that they were able to still hold on to the Lord in the midst of the tribulation, because a lot of people may go through stuff, as you see right now, and give up on the Lord. Like, oh, Lord, I don't want you to hold on to me. Lord, don't hold on to me. But they were like, no, Lord, hold on to me tighter, Lord. And, and, and if anything, let my faith grow in this. Let me see that this is working together for my good. They had the right perspective. Many people have the wrong perspective. But the Thessalonian church had the right perspective in the persecution that they were going through. Giving God thanks and praise. Because the fact that we can suffer, that the Lord suffered. We, we haven't even scratched the surface if we suffer. But just the fact that God would even allow us to suffer a little bit. We can just give God thanks to God that you counted me worthy to suffer a little bit for your name's sake. God, I give you praise. So they were able to thank God. Like, and Paul just wrote to just encourage them. Like, man, we thank God for you. You know, that's a testimony that he can write this letter and say, man, your faith is growing. In the midst of it, and it showed the righteousness of God that in the midst of it, that you're still growing and that God is giving you the grace to go through it. Because God won't put more on you than you can bear. So it shows that God was with them. And it also showed that they're not going to get away with what they do to you. The way the world cheat, uh, treats the church and the people of God, they will not get away with it. God said, vengeance is mine and I will repay people back. For what they have done to my church, how they, they they mistreat Christians over in the Muslim countries and all these type of things. Rest assured that they will have an appointment with the Lord and they won't be a good thing if they have not repented. The Lord will pay them back for not obeying the gospel. So the first chapter just brings you right on into it. And then they held on to the Lord. The second chapter, it, it, it hit hard because it shows the times we're living in. Paul, Paul began to let it be known that there first has become, has to come this falling away of the faith as we see in the times we live in. So many people are falling away from the faith. And he begins to talk about this Antichrist. I know many of you heard, uh, probably heard about it in church growing up, about this Antichrist. They've done documentaries on the Antichrist. Like, man, who's this guy going to be? You know, they're writing stories. They're all excited about it. Like, is it just, it's some good thing. Like, it's Jason, and we're going to have a, have a movie about it. Everybody going to go see it. It's going to be a sellout. No, it's not something good you know, that we should be celebrating and having documentaries on it. Let's see how many people will want to buy this. But... Paul lets it be known that when this wicked one is revealed, this son of perdition, he is going to exalt himself above anything that calls itself God. And when he talks about the mystery of iniquity that's already at work, it deals with the spirit of rebellion that's been working behind the scenes throughout all of history. Man rebelling against the call of God, the word of God, the things of God, the church of God. They have been rebelling. And it's all getting greater and greater. If you look at the world, the shootings and the floods going on, I brought a paper about the floods in the Carolinas where it talked about biblical flooding. I saw it. I said I had to buy it. I was at the gas station. It was, at first I thought it was a dollar. He said it was $2. I was like, dude, man, I thought it was a dollar, man. All right, man, I'll pay $2 and get it. Because it's an illustration. It wasn't an illustration if he's still sitting there. But, uh... I, when I looked at that, it just showed that all these signs, things are getting worse and worse. And it, 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 the signs of the time are right here. And it's showing that all this stuff is happening because it's making way for the lawless one. And Paul encourages the Thessalonian church that, we when, remember when I was with you, I told you that he was going to come. Many people who will be left behind when the rapture takes place will, will have forgotten what God was saying. But when the rapture takes place... And they come on the news and say, well, maybe it was aliens that took, you know, all these millions of people. No, those who were in church, those who heard the word will realize, oh, I remember such and such said that this Antichrist would come. That's who this person is. Amen. I've been left behind. And it will be too late for them because now they'll be in the tribulation period where they'll have to go through during that time. And it won't be a pretty time during that time. If you can't walk with the Lord right now when it's a grace period and hold on to him and ask him to hold on to you, you aren't going to be able to survive during those seven years of tribulation. 
So he encourages the church. He lets them be known that this spirit of iniquity is already working. And he lets it be known. It's, it's a sad day when God will send delusion and that you will believe a lie. It's a sad day when somebody can even be out, like and being out in a desert, and you've been out there all day, and all of y'all are walking, and all of a sudden somebody in the group is like, hey man, I see a Coca-Cola machine out there. Bruh, that's not a Coca-Cola. Man, it's a Coca-Cola machine, man. I'm about to go get y'all with me. Let's go get this. And you said, dude, it's not a Coca-Cola machine. Dude, you've been out here too long, and he runs to that mirage thinking it's a Coca-Cola machine, only to find out it's not a Coca-Cola machine, it's a mirage, like we told him. But he would believe the lie because he'd been in the sun too long, he'd been in the world too long. And it really shows that people don't love God. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to hear it at all. And it really shows that when God sends that delusion, they'll, they're going to believe that lie, that they would be damned and condemned because they didn't want the truth. God knew from the beginning who was going to make it and who ain't going to make it. We don't know. I hope from the beginning, you know, I, I want to keep on walking with the Lord. Lord, I want you to get my name on the list. Now, I don't want it to be a pencil. I want it to be an eternal pen. You know what I'm saying? Not a pencil. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, from the beginning, God knew that he would call us. We knew from the beginning. You didn't know that, but God knew that he would call you and save you. That's what Paul writes to the church. And uh, he encourages them to let them know this man is coming. And these are the things that is going to happen. It's going to be a falling away. But you guys hold on to the Lord. Hold on to the things that you've been taught. Whether by somebody else standing here or the word of God. That's what I mean having this now. Reading the word of God. He said by word or by the epistles. How you gonna know? If you don't read, how you gonna know that epistle? You know what I mean? So it's important. And the last chapter deals with not only... Um, praying that the word of God will have free course. We all need that prayer. Yeah. Now I need that prayer because it don't always have free course. Sometimes I just feel I just be walking. Sometimes I always, you know, I'm always walking fully in what God may have me to say. Like we were walking up today and we was coming up to Bible study. And Chris, we was walking past this guy. I'm just getting ready to walk up here. Chris, was, Chris, turn around. Hey, you know, we got Bible study here. You should come. It's eight o'clock this night. Dude, turn around. Hey, man. Hey, can you pray for me? You know, I need prayer right now. He was like, sure, you know, and I walked over with him like, yeah, I'm going to pray. The Bible says, you know, I've learned over the time, you know, if it's a couple of us, the Bible says watch and pray. Because I've seen some nonsense going on while you're praying. Like, I open up my eyes and somebody looking at me crazy. Like, they, you know, I didn't see some nonsense, so I'm learning. It was a couple of us, I, you can pray, I'm going to watch while you pray. Because I just see too much nonsense while you're praying. You know what I'm saying? The Bible said watch and pray. You know what I'm saying? So I've learned. While Chris was praying, I was watching. Just in case I'm not so much about the bush or something, I got to hit something, you know, I got to watch and pray. Like, Chris, duck, man, you know what I'm mean? saying? I gotta watch and pray. I've learned okay. wisdom. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So we gotta <laughs> pray that the Lord would have free course. We oh, I mean, it. Oh, no, I'm gonna get to her. I'm gonna get to her. Go ahead. So I was just gonna hit the chapter and go ahead. It wasn't a question, but um, when you said people don't really love God, yeah. I just thought about um, this time in high school. Um, I think I gave somebody a Merry Christmas card or something, and it said Merry Xmas. And then one of the one of my friends was like, oh, look, I never thought you would say that. And I was like, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. And she said, look at Xmas. And I was like, oh, we're putting an X over Christ. And I was like, oh, I'm going to do it. Oh, man. Yeah. 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 I knew that. I knew that that's what it means. Yeah, I didn't know. It just came back to me and you said you were not love God. Yeah, a lot of atheists, a lot of atheists and a lot of people who, who worship Satan, they would rather we change it from being Merry Christmas to you know, happy holidays, or, you know, X, Xmas, you know, they prefer that, and I, I, I knew, you know, because I've I looked at that, like, you know, like, that's, this shows how wicked, and it shows that people don't love God, even with all the truth, the atheists, you know, they don't love God, so that's a, that's a perfect illustration, all the stuff going on in the world, people will still be blind, you know, the, the prophecies, things that the Bible has said would happen, has been prophesied thousands and thousands of years ago, and it's come to pass just as the Bible said. Nuclear warfare. That's the Bible in Zechariah 14. He said, nuclear for that you while you're standing, your flesh will burn up off of you, your tongue would melt in your mouth, and your eye sockets would explode. That's a perfect illustration of nuclear fallout. Talked about the increase of knowledge, talked about Israel will be a nation. That's the Bible. 
China would have a 200 million man army, and they, they did that in the 1960s. The Bible has prophesied this long before, but yet scientists and atheists and all these people will, will, will say, man, I, I don't believe. And so God will send them the delusion that they would believe a lie. And when, when all these lies come, they're going to believe it. And when the Antichrist comes, he's going to be able to work miracles and lying signs because they all they wanted was lies. So God is going to give. The only reason why the Lord hadn't come back uh, yet, because I believe God is still, uh, grace and mercy is still being poured out. There's still souls left to be saved. And when it talked about he that led it, um, when, when, when he is moved about the way, meaning when the Holy Ghost is taken from the earth, when, when, when we, when, of course, that includes us, you know, with the Holy Ghost in, you know, in us, you know, we're going to be left. When the Holy Ghost is taken from the earth, that lawless one is going to be revealed. There will be nothing to hold back from the Antichrist coming forth and having full-blown sin. If you, if you think it's bad, now just imagine when the Holy Ghost is taken, when the presence of God is completely taken from the earth. When God's spirit ain't here no more. Because it's the Lord right now that's keeping the enemy from coming back. If he can do what he really wanted right now, we ain't seen nothing yet. This the mayhem and the nonsense that's going to happen on the earth. It's going to blow people's minds But when the Holy Ghost is taken. But God is going to give them what they want because they didn't want the truth. So in the last chapter, we pray that the, the hope that the word would have free course in our lives. We need that, that the word would have free course and that we would allow God to have his way. And then Paul exhorts the church because there were people who decided that they was going to be lazy and they weren't going to work. And Paul said, those that don't work, don't eat. You know what I mean? He said, those who were walking disorderly. And it's one thing where people, he talks about in the chapter when you study it, that those who really needed help, it's, it's one thing to help the poor and needy, those like that, but those able-bodied, who Paul was talking about, who are able-bodied and who can go and work, he said, uh, note them and don't have no company with them because they are able-bodied, they're able to work. So, but don't count them as an enemy, admonish them, encourage them. And I, as Mariah was talking about, you know, you don't want to count them as an enemy or a person who may do you wrong and things like that. You pray for them. The Bible says in Romans, if it be possible, you know, be at peace with all men. As the book of Romans says, if it be possible, be at peace with all men, if, you, if it's possible, you know. <laughs> Paul said, if it's possible, you know, so it's possible with Christ, you know, but, uh, you know, you, you gotta walk in the spirit. So, uh, but Paul exhorts the church, note them and have no company with them, that they may be ashamed of the fact that they're trying to take advantage of other people who are willing to work. And Paul was letting the church be, let, let it be known that all of you who are working, keep on working because you are an example to people. When you're working in the world, while you're here, you're an example to somebody. You can be a testimony on your job that the Lord is a provider, that he's real, that he is somebody who can save you and deliver you. Keep being diligent in the things that you're doing. And those that ain't being diligent, pray for them. But don't have company with them, so you don't get yourself caught up in their nonsense. And then he, he ends it by, uh, with, uh, may the Lord, you know, bless you and keep you, you know. And so it encourages us today that, Lord, hold on to me. Hold on to me, Lord. Don't, don't let me go. You know, because these are the times we're living in where people don't want to serve God. But we want to have that heart that we're going to serve God. I don't want delusion. I don't want to believe a lie. I want, even if I'm dealing with something, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, Lord, I, I want to call right, right, call wrong, wrong. You know what I'm saying? Even if, if, if none of us are here, this is why it's so important with the Word of God. If I, if, if, we, if I don't never teach another Bible study, Kevin doesn't teach or Bishop doesn't preach, it's, uh, it's so important that, that after all these Bible studies that you have something that you can hold on to. That if you don't have somebody there to preach the Word to you, that you have enough a word that you have gotten, that you have something to hold on to. You have the word of God. You have enough that will carry you on to let you know that even if they pass on, and they, 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 they may go off and find themselves, as I mentioned last week on Saints Gone Wild. You know what I'm saying? If they find themselves somewhere else, that you say, I'm still going to walk with the Lord despite what anybody else is doing because I know whom I have believed. This is something that we got to believe. We got to make our peace calling and election sure ourselves. It can't be here. We can't be here before somebody else. It has to be that I'm walking with the Lord because I want to be saved. 